what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another backyard talk um <clears throat> got a i guess different topic that we haven't uh, that i haven't talked about in other videos in today's video um that being um, and i'm not even done the book yet but i'm in the middle of reading this book by mo Gott called scary smart and uh, i thought it would be worth it to kind of make this video and kind of just give my general thoughts on kind of technology and ai and life integration and you know i guess from from what i've read and from not only this book from other things that i've seen i guess even myself and definitely other people just don't really have any idea or any concept or any idea of how to grasp um you know the evolution of technology that we're about to go through over the next call it 20 to 50 years and uh, i think it's very very interesting and uh, part of you know the, the aspects of this book are kind of going over um, a lot of really the negative of, I'm not finished with the book so I'm gonna make another follow-up video to this and give like my overall kind of thoughts and kind of I guess recap and takeaways from the book but um, so far it has gone over quite a bit of um, the the negatives that can potentially happen over the next 5 7 10 15 20 years regarding technology and AI including robots just getting uh, so smart that they figure out that hum humans are basically a waste of uh, time to time and resources and that you know we take up too much space and that we use too much energy and that you know uh, too much garbage too much shit too much food like too much human stuff that the robots just aren't like we're not efficient enough um, for them long term basically um, and the potential of um, you know evil or negative entities and negative programming or whatever to um, have robots out there in the world there's just like all sorts of like different scenarios and kind of ways that things could play out so to speak but a lot of the stuff covered in the book like isn't the most positive and it's very interesting to think about um, you know in terms of society life jobs um, purpose you know this guy Mo in the book kind of talks about you know, the other side of that as well is the potential, you know, utopia that um, AI can create to where if no, if there's no need for any human labor and every single job can, uh, can be done by, by a robot, then what are humans living for? What are humans doing day to day? What are they occupying their time with? And then what does kind of life turn into? Because a lot of people right now look at their career and, you know, providing for their family and stuff like that as like their reason and their purpose for, for, for living. So if that kind of goes away and that disappears and robots start to do all of our normal work and all of our normal tasks, then how does that shift the economy? What does the ratio of robots to humans look like? Does everybody around the world or most developed countries somehow start getting like more consistent government um, stipends monthly in terms of just covering living expenses? Like, does the government then just start kind of subsidizing everything? Does it turn into, you know, kind of more uh, socialistic in that regard in terms of everybody getting, you know, some kind of stipend to just live and raise their families? Or is it going to, you know, it's just very interesting to think about like all of the different scenarios of what might happen, you know, the number of humans that will be employed uh, overseeing AI and overseeing, you know, prompting and, you know, everything that's happening in terms of overseeing, you know, the, the databases and whatnot. But uh, from, from what I've read in this book, um, and again, I'm not like a person that's in technology. I don't work for Google or anything like that, but I just find it very, very interesting that we're basically, I think the book said, we're going to go through about 25,000 years of scientific uh, techno technological advancement, excuse me, um, technology advancement over the next, like, call it 50 years, 75 years, faster than anything we've ever seen. So it's really, um, computers are getting so much exponentially smarter year by year you know, in terms of capacity, data, information, reasoning, learning, um, all of the different robotics companies that are doing different machine learning. You know, there are robots now out there that I think can dunk basketballs and just like all sorts of like different uh, humanoid related activities. It's just, again, the, the place that we're stepping into, I think is very interesting ever since, you know, call it like 2019, 2018 to maybe 2020 or 2021 even. 
um, the, the talks around AI were like some chat GPT stuff. You know, I don't even think chat GPT was released in 2020. I don't think it was. I think chat GPT came out in like 2022. So most of the AI uh, talk was just that. It was just like, you know, people that were doing it professionally. But then in terms of the, the general consensus, I think, and general population of normal people weren't really like talking about AI much. It was like a sci-fi movie thing. It was like a fake uh, a fake kind of concept. And then once ChatGPT got released and everybody started to be able to integrate that system and learn how to prompt that, uh, that AI. And as that's gotten updates and came out with, you know, 3.0 and 4.0, I think they're at now, um, the system's just gotten smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. And, uh, again, like this book is mentioning at a certain point, um, the smartest human in the world is going to look like a fly in comparison to what an AI robot machine learning um, artif general artificial intelligence and then the book also talks about the moment of singularity I'll probably talk about that more in the follow-up video about this book as a whole but basically there's going to be a moment in the future and we have no idea when it's going to be it could be 2028 it could be 2035 it could be 2040 but there's going to be a moment sooner than we all kind of realize where the machines are smarter than us and the robotics become better than us at doing almost every task and at that point what happens right going back to kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of the video you know what happens when robots are better and more efficient and cheaper at doing almost every single job you know what does life transform into what does society turn into what does culture shift to right like will people start going to like ai dj like robotic like dj events or concerts right like will musicians and artists start to kind of lose their place will they gain a bigger place like how how are things going to shift will people focus more on human connection or will people kind of relinquish all of that and go like full steam ahead, so to speak, into like um, that movie. It, it reminds me of that movie, Never Player One. If you haven't seen that film, I would definitely go check um, uh, Ready Player One, not Never Player One. Ready Player One is the, is the film. And uh, in that movie, it just kind of showcases a potential future scenario and future cities. And it's just like so interesting where people are just so invested and uh, completely compelled by technology that like normal life kind of just changes where people are in AR, VR worlds and augmented reality worlds and people are less social and just like life starts to change, right? So I'm just very curious um, over the next three, five, seven, ten years, what's going to happen. I like to think of myself as an optimist, so I'm hoping that we can figure out a way to harness all of the technology for a really good purpose and to, you know, help the things along in the world that need it and, you know, in the countries that are more developed already that are using it more intensely than other less developed countries, hopefully figure out a way to um, actually fix and help with some problems in society, right? Like if, if we get all of this new technology and it doesn't actually fix some of our problems, then what's the point of having it? So hopefully we can actually uh, fix some of these things. And um, really, um, I think that's kind of it with the point that I was trying to make with this video. So if you've done any reading, if you've heard about this book or you've done any research about this topic, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And also, if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I'd super appreciate a like on the video uh, or a subscribe to the channel. Um, so with that, uh, that's another Backyard Talk, and I hope you guys have a great day. See you in the next one.